in fair view the reason being because they are totally heterogeneous then what do we do then we pick up for example in the case of advances operating fixed assets defer taxes whatever the items is okay items are bills payable totally separately and create a separate population we apply the procedure and then we come down to the our result now it's very interesting that audit sampling has kept changing its type and form over a period of time if we talk in its strict sense i mean if we take talk in a strict sense of a sampling whatever we do we are doing accountants are doing presently today in my humble opinion i may be wrong correct me it's not sampling it's not audit sampling uh inshallah when we uh, go through the you know the presentations and all that and discussions we will know that what i mean now we the auditors have modified the sampling actually according to our practical requirements and yes we can do it because what is the requirement the requirement is to obtain to apply audit procedures and to obtain sufficient audit a sufficient and appropriate audit evidence that would enable to give us a true and fair opinion that is enough for us okay now how do we arrive at audit sampling is one of the technique besides other selecting procedures now for example the audit firms we have given various names monetary unit selection valuative selection stratified sampling they all revolve revolve around the one basic concepts of giving substantial weight to high value items or material items while obtaining sufficient appropriate audit evidence now definitely audit firm are they are at liberty to adopt whatever the methods they 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 like i have seen different methods in different audit firm the even big four okay so um you would also come across with varying other terminologies by different audit firms like reliability factor adjusted sample size factor I have seen in one of a big firm they use the term instead of reliability factor they use adjusted sample size factor yet another firm uses minimal assurance at certain level of risk what are these they all again revolve around on one direction they move in one direction that is they are used in deter determining the size of the sample that's it there are other term terminologies also with respect to statistical sampling like attribute sampling variable sampling probability proportional to size which is called pps sampling discovery sampling but we would avoid unnecessary technicalities as far as because the purpose of today's seminar or uh, in my opinion uh, whatever i understand is to make it simple audit sampling simple to meet our audit objective for all however i have referred certain because of the you know professional reasons you will find certain references to different ises now that is the requirement that i have to follow you would observe that isa 500 refers to isa 530 and isa 530 is an extension of isa 500 so what is our basic isa for forming an opinion is not isa 530 rather it is isa 500 which is audit sampling oh, sorry uh, audit evidence and not the audit sampling now uh, before we embark on our journey i would like to uh, give you a road map how will we go about okay so isa 300 is audit planning 315 is identifying and assessing risk assessment through understanding the entity and its environment 330 is the responses and 500 is of course audit evidence okay how will we go about first of all we'll go through means of selecting items for testing to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence see this is the fundamental thing that we need to do okay then how do we achieve this this that is also we are going to discuss the next one is what is audit sampling and even more important is what is not audit sampling sampling and non sampling risk we'll discuss 
sampling approaches statistical and non statistical then why non statistical sampling is widely used because most of the audit firms we are all using non statistical sampling and it is widely accepted the reasons when we will discuss you would know then uh, planning the sample which is very very important selecting and testing sample then we will project errors to the population how the errors are projected towards population and how we form a conclusion then we will evaluate the results during the session uh, you would be given the random number table you would be given you know a method uh, showing a uh, 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 handout showing how to compute uh, sample under the systematics selection and finally we would work an exercise of non audit sampling as uh, very well pointed out by uh, my fellow mr riaz that what is our responsibility is to design and perform the procedure to obtain audit sufficient and appropriate audit evidence and on the basis of that we form our conclusions we form the conclusions and then we give an opinion so that is the requirement of course whatever procedure we decide, decide to apply or adopt they are all responsive to our risk assessment 315 and then we respond to 330 by applying 330 i'm talking of isa okay when designing test of controls and test of details the auditor shall determine the means of testing that are effective in meeting the purpose of audit procedure as i was emphasizing see the requirement of isa 500 audit evidence what is the requirement we need to know that is why i am saying that that is the reason i was say, uh, i was saying that isa 5 before isa 530 we need to understand the requirement of isa 500 but because whatever we are doing under isa 530 is for the purpose of isa 500 okay so means of selecting items or testing that are effective in meeting the purpose of audit procedures now what are the means available to us again see still we have not taken up isa 530 we are talking of only iso 500 it mentions iso 500 mentions selecting all items 100% examination selecting specific items and audit sampling so you can either go for one you can have one two or a combination what do what are the what do you mean by selecting specific items that is normally we do high value or key items for example items that are suspicious unusual particularly risk prone or that have a history of error all items over a certain amount items to obtain information such as the nature of the entity and or the nature of transaction of course this cannot be subjected to sampling what is the problem uh, with selecting high value items or the specific okay selective examination of specific items does not provide the audit evidence concerning the remainder of the population the why because the errors cannot be projected to entire population that is the problem with selective items that is not sampling that doesn't mean we cannot use it we can do it yes next then this answers our question is isa 530 always mandatory as again pointed out by mr riyaz also that isa 530 is only applicable if the auditor decides to use audit sampling for most of its assertion or some of its assertion so it only applies when the auditor has decided to use the audit sampling next then what is audit sampling 